me the next shiny new thing. Bring me the next. The pickleball chicks are obsessed with America's fastest growing sport, pickleball. Get ready for on and off the court hot topics. Lots of laughs, cocktails, and champagne with your hosts, Annie and Rebecca. I'm Rebecca. I'm Annie. And we're, we're the Pickleball, Pickleball Chicks. Chicks. Hey, Rebecca. Oh my gosh, we have been so busy. And I have to say, Annie's son's in town. And everybody knows what happens when Annie's son comes to town. The world stops and I have a lot of fun. It does. <laughs> it does. And that's so exciting. So Annie's been at home the last day just soaking in her son. Yes. Getting a little dock time, lakeside time, a little yes, pickleball. Yes, yes. It's been so wonderful. And speaking of children, Rebecca, where is your daughter these days, Sophia? My sweet little daughter, who we have talked about, who we have been watching Frank the dog, well, for a year. <laughs> uh, she is in London studying abroad, doing um, a some type of class for her law degree studies. Hmm, my goodness sakes. Way to go, Sophia. And sh happy birthday, Sophie. It was her birthday when she was there. June 27th. Happy yes. birthday, Sophia. Yeah. Hey, let's introduce the word oh my and God. drink of the day. We can cheer to Sophia. Yeah, I. it's the beginning of Ashton's birthday month, my <gasps> son. And if I leave, we all know how that goes. <laughs> happy birthday, everybody. Hey. hey, Rebecca, what is our word of the day? Okay, so... Because we have such a cool guest coming up. Super cool. Super cool. Our word of the day is flight. 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 As in flight of coffee drinks or well, flight of wine. Well, it could be whatever you wanted. Or, or flying. Like a real plane. Mm, yes. Ooh, I love it. And so when you hear the word of the day, everybody's going to drink. And our drink mm -hmm. from Ron, our pickleball chick. Mixologist. Hey, I'm Ron from Harbor Wine and Spirits in Mound. I am your Pickleball Chicks Mixologist, mixing up something fun for today's podcast. Grab your favorite glass and your favorite koozie and let's get started. And did he come up with a good one? It's the 44 State Bootlegger. Whoa! And it all starts out with this super spectacular, spectacular. And can I say spectacular? I mean, this is like, <laughs> actually, I've tried it. It's so darn good. Okay. It's the Summer Lakes Bootleg Cocktail Mix. Mm. Two ounces. You're going to want to do this. So write it down. Prairie Organic Gin. Here we go. Made in Princeton, Minnesota, where we're out of right now. This whole thing is about Minnesota since our guest cruised right through Minnesota. Whoa. And then, so there's one to two ounces of Prairie Organic Gin. And I did put in, in Annie's, I put three. <laughs> and then sparkling water, five ounces, and oh my god, oh, and the mint on top. I'm gonna tell you, wowsies, wowsies, wowsies. Cheers, cheers, and, and happy birthday, Sophia and Ashton. Thank mm. you. Mm. Well, Rebecca, isn't that delicious? Mm. God, that's that so is delicious. Good. Wow. Well, I'm really excited to get to our guest. I am too. Give it. Give it, give it the lowdown. All right. Hey, pickleball lovers. Today's guest. Wow. We have a special guest. Not only does our guest love the fastest growing sport, pickleball, ball. the hottest growing sport, pickleball, ball. <laughs> but he is a world record breaker. He is. Now, who doesn't want to meet him? Exactly. We are introducing Mr. Matt Dean, the pickleball pilot. To the pickleball player. <laughs> <laughs> Great to be here. Welcome. Thank you. Oh, we are so excited to have you with us and share your story with our listeners, even though you've been featured all over. Oh my gosh, I don't know if anybody saw it, but we watched them on Fox News. Mm -hmm. National and local coverage. You've spoken with so many people about this great, exciting idea. That I think you should really take us with next time. Yes. We well, we, we have plenty of room. We could, do, we could do that. How many suitcases can we bring? I just want to know. <laughs> <laughs> do you have a weight of our baggage? How many and is it how? Yeah, you know how 50 pounds... At the <laughs> at the at the airport, will take you down. Hey, whatever you want to bring, I just use less fuel. 
Oh, oh. that's okay. I have a backpack. Well, Not up me. to a point. Up to a point. That's okay, right? I would like to bring three bags. <laughs> three bags three <laughs> Pickleball bag, clothing yep. bag, yep. and shoe bag. Yes. Yep. That works. Yes. Yes. Oh, I, I love it. I'll just bring the backpack. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's funny. It's a six passenger plane. And uh, I started out with two bags. You know, I, I would bring a bag to the court and a bag, a bag to the hotel. And I'd have a, uh, my wife came with me for a few stops. Um, I had four or five different people uh, join me at certain stops along the way. But by the time I got back home, the plane was full of stuff. I mean, we got, <laughs> we got shirts and paddles and shoes and balls from every every state in the United States. So that's kind of that's kind of fun. Well, tell us a little bit about how you actually how you came up with the plan mm -hmm. and how you were able to actually take that time off and do this. And then we also want to hear about your partner in crime that was going to join you as well. Yeah, so the first, on your flight. I'm yeah. sorry, Teen. But on your, your flight. flight. Uh, now everybody flight, right. cheers. Drink up. <laughs> cheers. All right. So okay. uh, I started flying since high school. So flying's always been kind of a passion of mine. I've been around the United States in in various flights at one time or another. Um I had a plane for the last 25 years and recently upgraded to a six passenger plane. It's turbocharged. And it will be able to go up to 27,000 feet. So while I have been out west over the mountains in my other plane, this plane is just much more easier to do it with. So um, I moved down, my wife and I moved down from the Chicago area about two years ago to Sarasota, Florida here. And uh, we moved into a golfing community. We thought we'd be golfing, doing a lot of golfing. We have a little golf cart. But all we use our golf cart for is to go to the pickleball courts in our in our. Uh, in our <laughs> In we know the feeling. Yeah. <laughs> Annie yeah. has a golf cart too, and it hits the pickleball court yeah. a lot. So, so we started playing pickleball. I met a guy. Oh, I met a lot of people, obviously, playing pickleball. I met a guy who was a I said, hey, Shannon, I always wanted to go around the country. Now, Shannon's a, uh, he's a real pilot. He's He manages aircraft for a living, and he flies jets and all that stuff. Me, I'm just a single engine guy with a couple thousand hours, uh, instrument rated. And so we started planning that. He said, yeah, I'm going to clear the decks for May. We started this about six months ago. And I did all the logistics. I'm retired. I, so, so I've been calling people all across the United States, uh, dealing with sports commissions, visitors, bureaus. Uh, we have friends in a dozen states or whatever. And said, hey, here's what we need. When we go to, uh, we need to route uh, through the interior of the United States. So we're not going up to Seattle. We had a lot of requests to go up to Seattle, obviously, the home of pickleball up there. And, you know, we're not going down to Miami. So we're kind of all in the, like in, in Texas is a good example. We didn't go down to Dallas because we're just cutting through the panhandle at Amarillo. So I routed it and then I started making calls to 48 different visitors bureaus and convention bureaus. And I said, hey, this is what I want to do. I want to break a world record. I need your help. I need a venue. I need people to play. I need ground transportation. And then if it's an overnight stop, we need accommodations. Everybody was behind this you know then i went out to some sponsors Aww. yeah they all loved it and everyone was behind us i went to some sponsors you know selkirk was the anchor sponsor os first that makes the socks and compression sleeves a spot chicken and pickle we played the three chicken and pickles everyone loved the idea this so this is going to just be a lot of fun um and uh we got the routing all set on may 1st or a week before we took off shannon coming back live, live. with the pickleball pilot who is so hot his phone couldn't keep up with him outside next to his pool so what happens then hmm. well phone dies when it's too hot mm -hmm. we have to take the All show right. inside we had to take the show inside took it in took it in <laughs> and you were really sharing some fun details so please if you would dean pickleball pilot Let's pick up where you left off. If you remember. <laughs> I was probably in one of 48 states. I'm, gl I'm glad this didn't happen in the air or else we may not be having this conversation. <laughs> right. Right. I, I, think I don't want to go with you, Dean. <laughs> I do. <laughs> I remember what we were saying. So Shannon, my buddy, my pilot buddy, yeah. was going to go and uh, with me. He cleared the decks. I mean, he's a busy guy. He flies all over. To, this weekend, he's in uh, Peru, I think, flying. So he cleared wow. the decks for May. 
And then something come, came up at the last minute and it pained him to tell me he couldn't make it. So he couldn't make it. Oh. So I had, I had to turn lemons into lemonade. So what I decided to do, I was going no matter what, you know. Yeah, uh, well, good. So what I ended up doing is I ended up filling up the, the, the seat, my, my right seat, the co-pilot seat with friends and family. So my wife uh, met me for four stops along the way. Uh, hers, hers was kind of interesting. Um, she met me out in Oregon because she's never been to Oregon or Idaho before. She's been to all other states. So we get, I, I had a plaque made for the 50 state club, right? So oh. we, get to, we get to Oregon, we played in Oregon. We went over the river to Washington and we played there. And then we played, she got in a little plane with me. We flew over to Boise, Idaho, played in Eagle, Idaho, a suburb of Boise. And we, we had a good time up there. The mayor up there presents my wife, Luann, with a plaque for being the 50th state. So she's got that going for her. She loved that. Then she, yeah, she flew with me to uh, Salt Lake City, and then she took off to Chicago, and she would meet up with me about a week later. Um, she was one of the people that fl flew with me. Uh, on May 1st, I departed Sarasota and started going clockwise around the country. Our first stop was the Mobile Tennis Center in Mobile, Alabama. It's the second largest tennis center in the country, I guess. The first being in Orlando where uh, they had the Hertz PPA play the Hertz Open in December. So my buddy uh, from the local pickleball courts around here, was with me for that uh, that part of the trip. You know, once the plane once the plane started and we got in and we got packed and we got over the Gulf of Mexico, I knew it was going to be a, a good flight. You know, there's a lot of things that go through your head while you're planning this. What if the yeah. plane doesn't work? What if people don't show up and pick you up at the airport when they're supposed yeah. to? What if you have some bad weather? All sorts of things could go right. wrong. The trip was pretty much uh, spot on perfect. So he stayed with me. We played... Uh, from there, we played Vicks, Vicksburg, Mississippi, and we played the Speaker of the House of, of the State of Mississippi. We oh, played fun. along the route. We played ex governors uh, up in New England. We played uh, Governor John Lynch from New Hampshire, ex governor and ex U.S. Senator uh, George Allen from Virginia. We played him. We played pickleball pros like Elise Jones in Salt Lake City. In fact, Elise, oh. yeah, Elise and my wife uh, were on one team, and myself and the owner of uh, the the facility we played were on the other team. The girls won that one. Uh, we played <laughs> Special Olympics kids. If you saw the Fox video, then you knew we were playing some Special Olympics folks up yep. in Jonesboro, Arkansas. Raised a little bit of money up there. Uh, the stop before that was Memphis, Tennessee. We uh, did some inner city uh, low income youth. They've got a program going there that they're trying to get off the ground. So the whole trip was really about spotlighting who plays pickleball and where it's played. So we played in uh, private residences. We played in three private residences. We played in um, iconic five star resorts like the Greenbrier in West Virginia. They've got their beautiful tennis center out there. We were on center court there. We played even at an airport tarmac in in uh, Frederick, Maryland. And as cool. far as who, as far as who we played up your way, uh, the next stop from uh, we were in Rochester, Minnesota. The next stop was. Uh, who did you play with in Rochester? We just played locally. Oh, we played two firemen actually. Uh, oh, we played yeah. at a place called Chip Shots. Yeah. Uh, yep. So they've been there a while. And then after that, we shot over the Sun Prairie, Wisconsin. We played with Dave the Badger Weinbach. And uh, it's like the whole town was out. He, he's a he's a showman. He's like the greatest <laughs> showman. So he has the whole town in a tizzy. We get there and they're cooking bratwurst and they're playing polka music. Oh. And there, there was hundreds of people there watching us, and you know a lot of news coverage along the way. So that was a that was a good stop. And we got back to my own hometown in Chicago. We played at a YMCA. Uh, my my college roommate threw in nine thousand dollars for some charities up there. We had a fun up there. Yes. The next stop, my favorite person on the whole trip was in Kalamazoo, Michigan. Um, there are pickleball pros Yvonne and James Hackenberg that live up there. They also live in Surprise, Arizona part of the part of the year. You know, I think they play in the senior uh, circuit or whatnot. Uh -huh. And yeah. Yvonne's mom is 97 years old. Minnie LaPointe. And again, it's 97? one of those... Cool. 90, 97. And she cuts her own grass. She drives her own car. She cooks. She goes shopping. By, she's she's great. She was out there hitting with us, and the whole town came out to cheer her on. We played oh, the main, my God. 
Now, what is, say her name again. Minnie LaPointe. We want to do a shout out and a cheers to Minnie. Now, Minnie Bravo. Bravo. Yeah. That is super cool. That now, is cool. Along the way, I knew that our last stop back here in Sarasota, we thought we had the oldest guy uh, playing. Uh, his his name is Vince Golden. Vince is 93 years old. We play with him two or three times a week. We play with him this morning. Uh, he's still out there hitting the ball. He's got great ground strokes. You know, he's he he can move a little bit. He's got great balance. You have to have great balance or else you're going to fall and, and hurt yourself. Yes. But he's, he's a local treasure here. And, you know, Every community oh. has their own Vince and and uh, yeah. Minnie, right? Is Vince, is Vince the name of the guy from Marco Island that we love so much? I don't. I no. I don't. No, no. I, I don't yeah, it, is. It, is. it is. It is. We have a Vince in Marco Island. Yeah. Shout out I, to Vince. Yeah. Hope you're yeah. watching, buddy. And he drives his own car and goes to our church and all that stuff too. So that was that was fun. But along the way, we played at. Um, uh, we played at the Orchard at Jigsaw Health, you know. Oh, P cool. PPA used to play there, and I guess they had a little falling mm -hmm. out, but we played there uh, in Scottsdale. Mm -hmm. We played on, on Cinco de Mayo. We were in Amarillo, Texas. They had a huge uh, uh, showing for us. Uh, uh, I think it was a ladies group that was out there playing, and they called it Dinko de Mayo. <laughs> and, and I haven't well, heard that. Please. I haven't. I haven't heard that before. I'm. So, um, have you heard about that before? That's a good no. one. Think of the mile. No. And so now when we, we should have coined that one for ourselves. I'm surprised we didn't because we had eat, dink, dink and, and be merry. merry. So how did we miss? That? I don't know. It's weird. Yep. Hmm. And uh, let's see. I <laughs> I, I uh, had my buddy down here, Ron. Keenan uh, go with me from Sarasota through oh I'm sorry Sarasota through Kansas City. Then we played three chicken pickles in a row. He got out to Kansas City, took a big plane home. Uh, I was by which, myself. Which one? Uh, the chicken and pickle we played at uh, Kansas City, Wichita, and Oklahoma City. Bam, bam, and which bam. one was your favorite? Oh, they're all the same. You know, it's just they're kind of set up the same. You know, you got different people and personalities, and, and you know, we played uh, pro uh, Myra Roush out in uh, Oklahoma City. We played with senior pro uh, Scott Moore in Colorado Springs, uh, Colorado. I was by myself from Oklahoma City. I'm sorry, from Kansas City all the way through Portland, Oregon, before my wife really, joined me. We really should have joined you, Dean. I don't know. We didn't think this through because we would have yeah. done that. Well, I've picked up more. I picked up vagabonds better than you along the way. So, <laughs> <laughs> wait a minute. What? This is getting weird. <laughs> We're gonna have to edit that out. Yeah. <laughs> here's, here's a great. Here's a great story. I'm on Instagram and I'm kind of documenting my journey. And there's this there's this guy out there on the West Coast who who rented his house for a year to somebody else. So he had to get out of the house. His goal was to play 100 places of pickleball, 100 different venues. Uh, and so I'm watching him on Instagram. And he's starting to play some of the places I'm going to play when I get out west. He's from California. And so I call him up and I said, hey, Jimmy, uh, our, our paths going to cross? I'd like to meet you. So our, our paths did cross in Colorado Springs. And we played together. He was my partner out there because I didn't have a partner at the time. And then I said, hey, what are you doing uh, later this month? Can you get up to Providence, Rhode Island? Because I didn't have anybody from Providence back here to Sarasota. He drove his van all the way to Sarasota, hopped on Southwest Airlines, one-way ticket up to Providence, met me up there. I dropped off another guy that I picked up in Indianapolis. Jimmy hopped in the plane and finished the trip with me all the way down here in Sarasota. So I wasn't too lonely along the way. Well, I mean, we would have added to the fun, but, you know, whatever. Yeah. Well, we, well, that's true. I, Although, okay, yeah, yeah. I was just going to say, there really are no accidents. How exciting. Yes. You've met so many cool people on your adventure. And, and you wouldn't have had those exciting things if your partner in crime could have joined you. I mean, so. Yeah. I think it actually turned out a little bit, a little bit better. We play, uh, we stayed in hotels, you know, a lot of the vis vis visitors bureaus and uh, sports commissions put us up in hotels. Uh, but we did stay in people's houses that we never met before, and they never they never met me. I mean, that's just the wacky pickleball community, right? So we're very thankful for all the the friends we met along the way. It was fun for me because I would it was fun for me putting this together because I would be talking with people in all states, just having a blast. 
and routing this. And like I said, every state wanted us to, to be in their, their city. I actually played hardball in a couple cities. They were kind of dragging their feet. And no one was getting back to me. And I said, like Omaha, for instance, I said, Hey, if you, I need an answer from you, if you don't have a place for me to play and whatever, I'll move this thing to Lincoln. No, 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 don't do that. You know? <laughs> so, so, uh, we, uh, we ended up playing, uh, in 44 of the 48 states. Uh, when I got to Salt Lake City, I, I got delayed by two days because there was icing in the clouds and Salt Lake is surrounded mm -hmm. by, and I couldn't go through the through the icing in my single engine plane. So I was, I was down for about two days, kind of bored to death actually too, and just trying to get out of Salt Lake City. But I had a choice to make then. Do I, my, my next stops were gonna be Casper, Wyoming, uh, Billings, Montana, Bismarck, North Dakota, and Omaha. And I've been to all those before in the plane anyway. And these people work just as hard as every other city putting their, you know, getting the venues together. Right. And I and I had a choice to make. Do I delay the next 30 people? Do I push them back two days? Um, or do I just do I just say, sorry, we can't, we're gonna miss you and keep everybody else on schedule. And that's the choice I had to make. And the uh, if there's one regret on the trip, it's not being able to get up and see those those folks who work just yeah. as hard, you know, to, to host the event. But they understood it was, you know, safety concerns. So. Well, and that that is a thing. Everybody works hard to put all these things together. And, you know, we are on a ladder league. Uh, we play a couple times a week over at Mega Pickle and Pond. And a lot of the gals there had a lot of questions that they wanted to ask you um, just about your trip and all kinds of different things. And cool. so we had, we had shared the, your story with them a little bit. And one of the gals, let's see what her name is. Uh, it is Julie. Mm. Now, Julie wanted to know, she did know that you were staying at different um, pickleball players' homes that you didn't necessarily know. And she wanted to know, if, were there any stories, um, funny stories or mishaps or really cool homes or anything like that that you want to share with us? No, there, there were no mishaps. Uh you know, no one got out of the shower naked, and you know, <laughs> if that's, I could make one up if you want, but that, nothing like that happened. Uh, but, but I guess a story that would be close to that is I had a hard time booking California. You know, it's such a big state, and and my routing was coming from Henderson, Nevada, and going up to uh, Portland, Oregon. So I didn't want to go into San Diego or Los Angeles or or even San Francisco. That's that was too far west. I would have gone into the desert like Palm Springs. So I tried to get into Palm Springs at several places. They were like La Quinta, Indian Wells, you know, very well-known resorts that have dedicated pickleball facilities. They uh, were busy. They liked the idea. They just couldn't do it. And somebody from uh, the Sacramento area, just about 15 miles east of Sacramento, called me up and said, hey, I, I hear you're, you. Are you the nut job that's working on this wacky uh, <laughs> around the country? I said, yeah, that's, yeah, that's me. And they said, well, maybe maybe you're interested in our place. We live on a private airport. We've got our kids are world class water skiers. They're on the USA water ski team. We live on water ski lakes. They're, I've never I never knew what a water ski lake was, but they're long fingers that <laughs> they drive. The, and we have our own private pickleball court and we have an apartment because a lot of the water ski team plays uh, stays there when we're I said, sign me up. So that worked out very well. Wow. Yeah. Now that's cool. Now that's a cool story. That yeah, that one is... worked out well. Salt Lake actually worked out well too. I was having a tough and you know, there's a lot of pro players that live in that area. Mm -hmm. And a club, uh Club USA Pickleball reached out. And again, they heard of my event. Uh the Salt Lake Visitors Bureau wasn't really making giving me a lot of traction. And US uh Club USA Pickleball reached out and said, Yeah, we could I could get you some of the pros here, Tyler Long or Elise Jones and and Elise and her husband came out on a date night. They left their three young kids oh, at home. And uh, I, I did get one by Elise, and that was like my Super Bowl. <laughs> <laughs> Woo -woo! She is one of our favorite players. Yeah, we met is. her at the PPA. Many in, different places. In yeah. many different places. But initially at PPA in Lakeville, Minnesota, mm -hmm. which we had played at and, um, in February. She homeschools her children. Oh, that I didn't know. Yeah, well, I guess you would. I guess you would have to. Yeah, that's yeah. a lot of work. Yeah, it's a, a lot, lot of work. work. Yes. Yeah. So she. I was, I was disappointed that she didn't lay out on and dive on the floor to, to get. <laughs> <involved> <laughs> with. That was my next question. I wanted to ask you if she flew any which way to get the ball. No, she her 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 nice uh, very nice husband. I forget his name, but they were 
they were there. They uh, played with us for an hour or so, and then they had the, their own date night. So good for them. We no. really appreciated meeting them. That is really neat. That is well, neat. that is so exciting. But I know Rebecca has a few more questions. From Let's a go. Few other gals. Yes. So right. uh, from Christina, she wants to know who was your most memorable opponent mm -hmm. and why. Ooh. Good one. Yeah, it's a good question. I mean, we, I, uh, I'll, I'll say Minnie Lapointe, the ninety-seven-year-old. Yeah, uh, she's she was just a sweetheart. She she didn't have a she was she was so grateful that we came to see her and that she let us play. We let her play with it, you know. And I, and I thought it was just the other way around. In fact, <laughs> the cameras, the TV crew was interviewing her her on a hill afterwards. And they wanted to interview me, of course, afterwards. So I start climbing up the hill because she was just about done. She reaches her hand down to me, and I was going to assist her down the hill. She's up there helping me up the hill. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Now, that is cool. That is cool. Okay. Now, Megan mm. from Mega Pickle and Pond. Mm, Megan. She wants to know. Now, we know you've been gone. Was Were you gone for a month and a half? No, it was only 26 days. So 26 I, days. Oh. I, adver I advertise this as 48 pickleball games in 48 states in less than 48 days. But 26 oh, yes. days, okay. 26 days, I saw America. Well, so that what is, is. What does Megan want to know? Really impressive. Super so impressive. So Megan wants to know what was the first thing you did when you got home? I weighed, my, I weighed myself. You winged yourself. Weighed. Weighed. <laughs> And did you gain or lose? So I was so inter I weigh myself two times a day. And I was I kept thinking to myself before I took off, am I gonna gain weight or lose weight on this trip? Yeah. I thought I would I thought I would gain weight. Well, people think, well, you're playing all these. No, I'm playing like 20 minutes a day and I'm sitting still in an airplane for five hours a day. So I'm not getting a lot of exercise. Um, <laughs> but I didn't eat a lot. I, I ate maybe one big meal, like a chicken and pickle, uh Great food, obviously. That was our. That was my meal. I didn't do a lot of snacking, and there wasn't a lot of time to do a lot of snacking. It was really land, people pick you up, go to the courts, play TV interviews, back in the car, and 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 next onto the next city. But I, uh, I kept my weight. Now, in the in the the week and a half afterwards, I gained ten pounds. <laughs> so I'm, I'm working that off. But anyway, Megan, that's that's the answer. That's the first thing I did. Well, that's a good question, but I still want to know what would winging yourself be? I wonder. <laughs> I thought it was on like a pilot term or something like super cool, and I just wanted to know what that would be like. But I guess I misunderstood that question. Well, that is a funny one. Okay, now Lisa Ooh. wants to know what two states were you not going to go, which were not on your list to go to, and why. Well, obviously, it was uh, Hawaii and uh, and Alaska. So, you know, because it's the lower 48. Now, uh, I worked with Guinness, and they have world records for the lower 48 states. And at one time, Shannon and I, it, first off, when I started this, there was no Guinness world record. I was working with Guinness to develop a world record. And I would say, how about this idea? And they would say, no. And how about this one? No, no. Finally, I said... Well, how can you say no to that? You already have a, a category for the fastest time to play a concert in 48 states. So this is just like <laughs> playing a concert. This is playing pickleball. How can you how can you have that record and not this? So they finally said, okay, you're in. So they gave me all the rules. Me and Shannon signed up as a team. But when Shannon had a bailout, because we signed up as a team, I quit calling it a Guinness World Record attempt anymore because they wouldn't have certified oh. it anyway. So they do a lot of lower yeah. 48 they do a lot of lower 48 uh, state stuff and uh, where the, you know, that's where I got the 48. Now, if I could go further, mm -hmm. I call it the 48, 48, 48 out in uh, Salt Lake city. And, and every, all of your listeners have to look this guy up. My wife and I, when we were in Chicago seven years ago, we were watching TV and there's this documentary on this goofball out of Salt Lake city. And he's anything but, um, he did, he called himself the 50, 50, 50 iron cowboy. This guy's documentary. He did 50, not marathons, 
50 Ironman triathlons in 50 states in 50 days. Pause. Wow. And he had, he started out in Hawaii and, and Alaska and then Washington. And then his wife and family drove with him in the van. He would get up at seven. And these are 120 uh, uh, mile things, you know, 2.4 miles of swimming, oh, that's uh, 100, 112 of biking, 26 point or whatever of, of running every day for 50 days. Mind over matter. His name is James Lawrence. And I got in touch with him. I said, James, I'm coming through Salt Lake. You're my inspiration. Of course, what I'm doing is like kitty land, right? Compared to what this guy did. <laughs> um, now, how physically, how could a person do that is really a crazy thing to well, me. It's, but it's, it's mind over matter. So anyway, I asked him to come play with us in Salt Lake City. He was going to be my, my uh, player. And he, he had to back out at the last minute. But in talking with him, uh, since he did that seven years ago, he did 101 Ironman triathlons in 101 days. Now, he didn't go to 100 states. He just did it in Salt Lake City. Yeah. But that's like 14,000 miles on your body. Mm. It just boggles the mind. So he's he's a big TED talker. He's uh, He does wow. inspirational talks. Oh, yeah. Look look him up. James uh, Lawrence, the 50-50-50 Iron Cowboy. If you do nothing else today, look, look up the three-minute trailer, and it'll get you excited about – about following this guy. He's, he's a beast. Wow. Well, I don't know if you know this, Dean, but when I was, oh, I don't know, I think in like fifth grade, uh, my best friend Barb and I, we were going to do the world record for the Guinness Book of World Records for uh, rocking in a chair. I, wow. often, I thought I would, when I was a kid, wow. when I was a kid, <laughs> I wanted to do I wanted to do swinging on a swing. So I, I think every I think everybody's got some some something they want to set a world well, record about. Wow, I have to say you guys really went all out. I, I lived such a fun little child's life. I mean, man, I was always doing something. Anyway, um, so we have a couple more questions. We don't want to keep you. Um, you've got, uh, a big I got all day. Let's go. Well, well, I mean, maybe we want to. Um, so the question that I always like to ask all our guests um, is. If you could play, and I do want to just say one more thing about, sounds like you had a lot of cool flights. Oh, because for our listeners, we oh, have not nice. said that very much. Yep. Okay, so uh, if you could play with anyone as a pick with uh, pickleball doubles, could be a guy or girl, and it's going to be social play, so it doesn't have to be somebody who's great and you can't pick Minnie because I know this is who you'd pick. <laughs> <laughs> so it'd be somebody playing socially for doubles. Uh, who would it be and why? Well, I'll just go with the easy answer here. I guess uh, I'll pick two people, my wife and Vince Golden. Uh, and they were the people that we had at our 48th stop. I mean, to be 93 years old and, and uh, getting out of bed, let alone playing pickleball every day <laughs> right, in, in, right. in the hot in the hot Florida sun, let alone yeah, right. True, um, true. So we see him out there. He's just a great guy, and uh, and my wife obviously for putting up with me and doing all this this goofy trip around the country. So those would be <laughs> the the two people. If you're looking for celebrities or or players or, or you know professionals or whatever, I don't really have an answer for you. We're not. Yeah, we just wanted we, that was the uh, yeah yeah, and and that was so beautiful. And I think we should cheer to your wife for joining you on your flight and supporting you, and supporting you. And we know behind every good man is a good woman. So cheers, yes, yep. cheers to, to your wife. What is your wife's name? Luann. 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 Yep. You rock, sister. Yes, you do. Yep. <laughs> So, and she started playing golf a while back, and I'm like, I don't want to teach you how to play golf. I don't want you on the golf course, you know. <laughs> I don't want you. Slow, I don't want you slowing us down. But she, so she took golf lessons with somebody else, and she got better and better. Then she started playing with me, and I really enjoyed seeing her get better and better playing golf. Same thing with pickleball. She's she's uh, getting better. Um, she's probably a two and a half now, and she's. But when I got back from my trip, I played with her. And I'm, I'm, I like did a double take. I'm like, you must have been playing a lot when I'm gone because you are, you are you're noticeably better. So it's fun to watch people get better. That is so that fun. Is cool. And you know, regarding golf, I mean, true story. Every husband is like, oh my gosh, 
you know, I can remember going to a private golf club, you know, just don't embarrass me. And you know what I did? I took a swing in a really cute outfit and I did a whirly bird, like I twisted <laughs> around and I'm like, voila, no one was impressed. Oh. But I was. <laughs> so golf is true. Pickleball, yeah. however, you get on the court, people are very welcoming yeah. as new people entering the sport mm-hmm. that we love yeah. so yeah. much. And it's our jobs, I feel, to continue to carry on welcoming people yes. to this fabulous sport. Yeah. So that's a cool story. And I know Rebecca has just a few more questions and, and uh, we should get going with them. I do. They're fun. Now, these are just a fun couple questions. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Starbucks or Chipotle? Or Chipotle? Well, uh, so this is, is coffee versus Mexican food? <laughs> I thought you were going to say, I thought you were going to say, well, Starbucks. we're going to do it. <laughs> I, thought gonna, I thought you were going to say Starbucks like versus Dunkin' Donuts or whatever. No, I, okay. I, I normally, I could say Starbucks or Caribou, but I'm not doing that. This is a fast. Okay, so okay, so here's the answer. It's uh, I hate Starbucks, so it's and I like Chipotle, so it's Chipotle. Now oh, I will I'm... tell you this: the people I played, the people whose house I stayed in Sacramento, they own three, uh, they own six Dutch Brothers coffee places, oh. and that coffee is really good too. So that's oh. we don't have them out here in Florida, but it was very smooth, very good coffee. Nice. Well, nice. then maybe we'll hit that joint when we get to California for pickleball. Okay. Brunch or happy hour? Mm. Brunch. Ooh. Pickleball indoor or outdoor? Mm-hmm. I'm going with uh, I'm going with outdoor. Planes, trains, or automobiles? <laughs> Planes. My wife and I. I mean, when we go out, like, so when I got back here, uh, uh, May 26th, two weeks later, we uh, everywhere we go is basically in our plane. So we flew up to uh, St. Simon's Island, Georgia. Just had some nice relaxing time, three or four days up there. They have some pickle. Of course, now we're playing. We're bringing our pickleball uh, stuff. We're not bringing our golf clubs anywhere, and we're about we ready to go up there again. Uh, maybe next week we'll go up there. Oh, that's so cool! Oh, that's awesome! That is so awesome, and you're awesome. Yes, and been you've been such a fabulous guest, and we just want to know: Have you trademarked the pickleball pilot? Oh, no, just. Uh, they haven't trademarked that. They haven't we'll trademarked. <laughs> well, well, let's. I think what we need to do, Dean, is I think we need to look at our calendars and get something situated for the three of us and your wife. Yeah, my wife. We'll Actually, fly down. We'll fly next time you're all in Naples or whatever, or you pick the place. We'll fly up and meet you, and uh, we'll uh, we'll have some good time playing pickleball. Well, Fabulous. Let's, let's do that, and we would like to say cheers to you. What a cool Cool, cool idea. And congratulations on breaking a world record. Both. And way to live your life to the max. Well, thank you. We're having fun. I'm retired now, so now I got to find something else to do. <laughs> <laughs> well, stay in touch with us, Dean, and you have a great holiday weekend. Likewise. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Today's podcast was sponsored by. Harbor Wine and Spirits and Summer Lakes Beverage Bootleg Mix and Prairie Organic Spirits. And a very special thank you to Ron, our fabulous pickleball chicks mixologist. Hey, we would like to thank Heat Healer, our sponsor, one of our sponsors. One of our sponsors, and man, yes. are they awesome. Oh my goodness. Lauren, this is a woman owned business. Mm-hmm. And she really has supported our pickleball chicks VIP lounge. Yes, she has. And one of our favorite products that we are going to talk about today is the Heat Healer Body Belt. It's portable. We used it at our last event, and everybody who was there, every player used mm-hmm. it. And check it out. Annie has it right in a little bit of little bitty bag. Little bitty bag. And the nice thing about this is whether you have a little pain after playing, mm-hmm. which we all do, mm-hmm. your back, yes, or Knees. Ooh. My knees. I. You know what I do is I wrap it around my knees. I sit and watch Breaking Bad oh. for a good <laughs> 50 minutes till the timer goes off. And I fix by the next day and then I'm back on the court again. Mm. Rebecca, I love red light therapy and I believe in it. And we would like to thank Lauren. And by the way, these are on sale right now. So I say get out and get yourself a body belt.
Get It by Heat Healer. Thanks for your support, Lauren. The belt targets up to eight areas of the body that need soothing post-workout recovery and more. Find them online at www.heatfeeler.com and on social at Heatfeeler. On sale now, $238.40. Thanks so much for joining the chicks and our world record-breaking guest, the Pickleball Pilot, D. Matt. We want you to comment on your favorite topic from the show today. And if you would like to be on one of our episodes or have ideas for our show, email us directly at dink at pickleballchicks with an x.com. Watch us on YouTube where you will find all podcast episodes at Pickleball Chicks with an X. Or of course, listen to us on Apple or any podcast platform. Thanks for subscribing and sharing the chicks with your friends. Have a great time on and off the Pickleball Court. Until next time, cheers. Shiny new thing, bring me the